Hello! So today I want to bring a story of provision from a story that is brought all the time. We all love the good story about the feeding of the 5,000. You know, we love a good story about food, is what it actually is, but honestly, when I hear that someone's going to talk on this or I read from this, I almost go into neutral mode because I feel like I know this story inside and out. I know that Jesus was teaching one day to a massive crowd of 5,000 people, not including women and children, just to be exact. I know that afterwards they all got hungry. The disciples were like, send them all away. We can't feed them. But this kid, this boy was like, I have five loaves and two fish for my lunch. If you want it, you can have it. And the disciples were like, you're not going to do much with that. But Jesus was like, oh, I am going to do something with that. And he prays over it, breaks it up, divides it out feeds the 5,000 and then had, you know, just 12 baskets left over to prove his point that he's Jesus and he does miracles with nothingness. Yeah, like, heard it all before. This story is incredible and we just skim over it. And, you know, we think that miracles happened just because he's Jesus and he's incredible, but this miracle started with one, the boy and as we lunch. So I just want to take three small points out of this story all about the boy and what we can take from him and apply to us because this miracle might never have happened without him. So boy point one, this 5,000 plus crowd was sitting under the teaching of Jesus who is actually teaching about himself which is be like a beyond moment for anybody there. But I can imagine this boy just sitting there as he begins to realize who Jesus is. The scriptures already haven't declared him before he even came, but also what Jesus is about to bring. Not just world salvation, but his salvation. And after a while, this Jesus is looking for provision for a miracle. And after what he just heard, best believe he'll offer what he has to make it happen. We sit under life changing teaching in Green Pastures Church. We sit under life changing vision in Green Pastures Church and we are currently sitting on a life changing miracle in Green Pastures Church. How often do we say after what I just heard, best believe I will give what I have. So boy point one, Bless the house that blesses you. In words and in actions, uphold its standards, don't run it down, spread kindness, give what you can, not just in finance, but in time, effort, commitment, loyalty and honour. In fact, carry its name with honour and make sure your agenda isn't more important than the good of the whole. If the boy had kept what he had for himself, Thousands would have went home starving, empty and lifeless. That is not the way that Jesus works and it is not what he came here to do. And it is not what we came here to do. And that leads me to boy point two. Bless the community that surrounds you. So often we think that taking is gaining. To get more, we need to take more. But if our hearts are directed towards Jesus' heart, we'll realize that we should be living in an upside down world, in a kingdom where the first is last and the last is first, given is getting. The boy had probably been traveling, waiting around, getting pushed around by the crowd, listening for hours. And let me tell you, if I had a snack with me, I would have been thinking about it all day and 100% unwilling and sharing after a day like that. And honestly, there's probably about 100 willing to testify to that. Stacy does not share food, especially chocolate. But the boy didn't see his needs, his things, his agenda above the good of the whole. See, what if church isn't so much about us getting something out of it as it is us giving ourselves away in it? When did church become about, I didn't get much from that worship set today? Or I didn't really think the pastor was as good today. Or I didn't have anyone from leadership contact me this week. This moment 
of Jesus' teaching and feeding a crowd of 5,000 plus was essentially the beginnings of his church. In this moment, there wasn't time for greed, selfishness or petty parties. In fact, as the church continued to grow, we read in Acts 4 that the believers shared everything they had and no one was in need. This believer thing, this church thing, this kingdom thing is not about providing for ourselves or our leaders and pastors providing for us. It's about providing for each other. That's what church is. Now, I faced this whole message on what was probably a one minute in the grand scale of this miracle story. The boy takes up like one tiny sentence in the chapter. Um, but what I want to narrow the one minute moment into the one second swap, and that'll lead me to boy point three. Now, I've shared what I think he was thinking, what he was seeing, what he was feeling. But what when it came to the second that he actually had to act on surrender, sacrifice, obedience and faith? That second where he had to hand it over and let it go. It's all sweet and wonderful, blessing the house that blesses you and blessing the community that surrounds you. But what about my blessing? What about your blessing? Because we all want to be blessed, don't we? And you know, no one is likely to be too bothered about giving up their tuna sandwich to share around. But what about the heavy days that life asks of us? The empty hand moment where you've given what you have, but now your hand's empty. Your need, your ask, your plead, your provision, your blessing hasn't arrived. The empty hand moment. And I know, I know what that feels like. I've watched our family hold out their hand and surrender, sacrifice, obedience and faith to bless the house and to bless the community for years and years, sewing, giving, working and labouring and much of that in private that no one will ever know of. But as people take, take for their own vision uh, or they take down reputation, take out honour and respect, there's an empty hand moment. And I so often ask, where's the swap, the return, the reaping for the sowing, the justice for the thieves that took, the truth, for the lies that they told, the honour for the mockery that they made, the answered prayer, the blessing, the provision. That boy had the swap second when he handed what he had and was left empty handed. And maybe you can relate. The promise sown but not yet reaped. The house, the job, the healing, given what you have to bless but left with an empty hand. And I just want to frame that moment for the boy. Like when he, he gives all that he has, but there's a swap second where there's nothing in his hand, but you know, it was a swap. Not only did he get to witness a miracle, not only did he get to be part of a miracle, but in that empty hand moment, Jesus was swapping his small provision for an overflow of blessings. And you know, I read earlier at the end of that story, that they were le had leftovers from five loaves and two fish, they had leftovers of 12 baskets. And you know, maybe it wasn't just Jesus proving a point with leftovers, but maybe the boy got to take it all home just because he gave what he had, blessed who he could, and trust it in the empty hand moments. Jesus provides over and above what we ever need or could even think that we need. And today I'm praying that you bless the house that blesses you, you bless the community that surrounds you, and you get your hopes up and your hand out that God is going to bless you right back. Today, this is all about provision and I am believing that there's not just provision for our church, uh, not just provision for our community, but provision for you. And I'm praying it into being today and you should too. So get your hands out.